Hey, I'm Zoe and welcome back to my channel, Zoe's All Booked. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show. Today I'm going to be talking about books that ruined me. Like I am talking about ugly crying, not okay, just thought about it for weeks after. The kind of book that I don't know if I ever want to read again, which is big coming from a rereader. A chronic serial rereader. I'm not emotionally stable enough for that. I don't have enough liquid in my body to be able to read this and then not have a trip to the hospital again. You feel me? Cha feel. Cha definitely feel. I've got five of those. Let's just get right into it. The first one I don't own. It was my mom's book. I don't know if I will ever purchase this book because I'm not gonna read it again and I don't want that level of sadness in my personal library in my life. The first one is My Sister's Keeper by Jody Picoult. I've never actually said her last name out loud. Jody Pico? Picoult? Pickled. Let me know. I should have looked this up first, but it's late. If you saw my Libra season TBR video, you'll know that this it's 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 midnight right now and I'm filming this. So I didn't prepare. This book is about, I don't know how much I can say, but it's about a young girl who has basically lived her whole life as a donor for her her, her older sister who has leukemia, I think. I'm not sure on the specifics. It's been a very long time since I've read this book. The movie ruined it. That's all I'm gonna say. This book, I'm crying just thinking about it. I finished reading it at my grandparents' house. I was in the living room, sitting on an armchair, casually reading, not thinking that the end of this book would be so devastating that I cannot think about it without tearing up well over 10 years later. <laughs> I started flipping the pages faster and faster because I was like, no, there's no fucking way that this is happening, that what's happening is about to happen. And my grandparents thought I lost my entire fucking mind. I, like, I had an entire box of Kleenex next to me and it was almost gone. I was sobbing, like loud, ugly, crying, heaving, hiccuping sobs. Like I, I was not expecting it. I'm, I'm gonna put a spoiler thing on the screen with it, with a sound so you can skip ahead if you wanna read this or if you wanna watch it. But like, you've been warned, GTFO, skip ahead to the next part. In the movie, the sister with cancer dies at the end and everybody's lives go on. In the book, I'm pretty sure it happens right after, I've got full body chills, like goosebumps everywhere. The healthy sister who was basically, I'm pretty sure the parents had her so that she could be a donor for organs and uh, bone marrow and whatever she, if the older sister needed, and that was her entire existence. And she was fighting for legal emancipation I don't know if I can, if that was a spoiler or not, so I'm just gonna keep it in this part. And I'm pretty sure it was right after she was granted emancipation with full support from the sick sister because she does not want to go on like this. She doesn't want her younger sister to be in this position. She's like, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm, I can't deal with this anymore. This is too much. So she fully supports her younger sister becoming legally emancipated as a minor. It happens. And it's, the healthy sister dies. I think it's a car accident. And then the, the sick sister goes into remission for the rest of her life. The devastation that I, Like the movie, they changed the ending and I'm pretty sure the author hated it. I remember seeing like a Facebook thread or something where she did not approve of what they did. But like, <laughs> legally emancipated, ready to live her life for herself and not for someone else. Her parents don't have control over her anymore. Car accident, she's dead. Remission. and like the guilt that the older sister lives with after. I don't know if they were in the car together. I don't remember. Like I blocked this shit out. 
Okay, I'm gonna end the spoiler part. But like, for those of you who have not read this and you are into being like torn from the inside out emotionally, that's very inappropriate if we're going like physically. Read this book. I, I can't even look at the book. I cannot even think about it without like feeling anxious. Like I'm gonna start crying again. Like it, she chose violence when she decided to sit down and write this book. And I respect the fuck out of that. But like, I will never read it again. Next up, we're gonna go with a, a different tone here just to break it up. Kingdom of Ash, the last book in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. How many pages are in this book? I don't know exactly where, but I think about this, the last, at least the last 200 pages, I had a steady stream of tears. Um, like I, I was not well. Uh, if you've never heard of the Throne of Glass series, first of all, what rock have you been living under? And can I come shelter under there so I can just get away from some things? The first book follows uh, Selena, a former assassin who is rescued from a mine where she's been a slave so she can compete in the competition to become the king's champion. What the fuck was that? I just heard a loud thud upstairs, but I don't hear any crying. Let me check the cameras real quick. No, somebody fell off a bed. Yep, no, it fell off the bed but he seems to be okay. We're gonna power through until he starts crying. Anyways, um, she has to compete against 23 other people. She survives, she gets her freedom, basically. Um, but something is killing the champions and she needs to figure out what's happening before she's next. This is the seventh book after that. Eight with the sequel, but like, some people read it first. I don't recommend that, I didn't read it first. But anyways, this is the, the final one. There's there's a lot of shit that happens and a lot of characters that you come, become very attached to and a lot of things happen to these characters and it, it ruined me. Is this the best written series, the most beautiful writing ever? No, no it's not. Is it entertaining as fuck? Yes it is. Oh, he's coming down the stairs. I will be back. He fell off the bed and he wants to hang out. But that one, I, I reread that series at least once a year now. Uh, next up, this is this one, uh, The Allison Rules by Catherine Clark. I don't remember when I got this. Uh, pre-2015. When did this come out? Uh, 2004. Okay, so I probably, maybe 20, 2012, 2010 I got this. I remember reading this in my old room, in my old house, uh, surrounded by lime green walls, sobbing like an absolute idiot over this book. I've read it one other time since to see if it actually was as sad as I remembered or if I was just an emotional teenager. It was. It absolutely was. This one follows a girl named Allison uh, who has very strict rules for everything. This, it doesn't say much in the blurb here and I don't know. Oh, okay, here. Well, a little summary here. Allison tries to deal with the pain of her mother's death by sticking to rules until charming Patrick moves to town. Then she learns that no matter what, life still happens to you. I remember being devastated when you learn like what happened to her mom and um, just like her processing all of these things, just navigating that. That is an awful sound, dude. This took me out in the second time when I was like, no, maybe, maybe it wasn't that bad. I was just, I was a very emotional teenager, which is hilarious because I was a, a very emotional mid 20 something and I'm in a very, a very emotional early 30 something. I was not prepared to be as sad as I was again. Next up, another one from my teenage years. Beep, beep, beep. Uh, this one is a more popular one. All done lights? Yes. Yes, all done lights. Very bright lights. Do you want to go sit on the other chair over there? You want to sit with Mama still here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. My big baby, I love you. Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Oh boy, I think was the first time that I ever felt truly seen by a book. This is another one that I was reading around someone else. Uh, I was reading it laying in bed with my mom, I think. She was asking me what the book was about and I, cause I was, heaving sobs again and like I remember sitting up and leaning against the wall 
and I had to put the book down because I couldn't see, I couldn't breathe. I was trying to tell her why it meant so much to me, but I just didn't have the words. And I'm at a point where I don't even remember what most of this book is about. I have also never seen the movie. Should I? Let me know. But like it... This took me right out. I was unwell. I truly dislike when there's not actually like a blurb, a summary, um, whatever, about the book on the back. This is, this is killing me. Haunting novel about the dilemma about the dilemma of passivity versus passion, occult sensation, okay. Story of what it's like to grow up in high school, uh, told through letters. Hilarious and devastating, singular and unique. Caught between trying to live his life and trying to run from it, puts him on a strange course through uncharted territory. World of first dates, family dramas and new friends. World of sex, drugs and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. When all you need is that perfect song and that perfect drive to feel infinite and like that line right there just oh my god okay i'm gonna start crying i need to i need to nod because this is not the time of night that i need to be up crying all night long because this one might be so i need to be emotionally stable enough to deal with that that one ruined me like i i felt so seen i felt so understood and i didn't know how to explain why to somebody else and now I'm curious because I've never reread that one because it was just it was so intense. I'm curious at 30 if it'll still resonate. I don't know. I might have to do a reading vlog. And the last one. This was an unexpected favorite. I was not prepared for this. I didn't cry a lot, but it stuck with me. This last one is The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schreffer. Hi, dude. It follows two guys on... Is this a spaceship? Yeah, Alone in Space, Sworn Enemies, the one character wakes up with no recollection of how he got there. Things aren't adding up. There's evidence of other people having been on board, but it's just supposed to be the two of them. And there's just, there's a lot of shady shit happening. Oh, the ship's operating system is voiced by his mother. Despite all of these things that are happening, there's nothing that will stop him from finishing this mission because it's a mission to rescue his sister. But to get through all of this, the two guys on board need to learn to work together, to trust each other, even though they hate each other especially once they find out what's actually happening because it's real weird. Oh, it works. It works? It's a word. That's a book. Oh, there's words? It's a book. It's a book, yes, that's right. The way this all played out, I read it for the Amazing Readathon, not this year, last year. See, I had an arc of this for two years and I don't really love sci-fi, so it was just, it was kind of sitting there. I regret waiting that long because it was so good. It truly like i was unsettled thinking about it after it just ugh, just everything about it it was so good it really really stuck with me um like for weeks after i would just be doing something and i'd zone out thinking about the ending and now there's gonna be a sequel but it's actually like a is it a prequel or is it i don't know but there's gonna be another book set in this world you want to go over there yeah okay you want to go get the giraffes you want Mama to come with you? Okay, can you give me one minute so I can finish? Sure, thank you. I was just not prepared to love it so much and for it to like, give me a lot of anxiety in a way, but not in a bad way, if that, if that makes sense. Again, I didn't cry a lot, but like I was emotionally ruined, mentally ruined for weeks after. And I am uh, semi-prepared to have that happen again with the next one. Anyways, that's it. I need to get this kid up, back up to bed, but he will not go right now. I tried and he he refused. He saw the lights on down here. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole usual end of the spiel thing. So let me know if there's any books that you recommend that have ruined you. If you read these, let me know. Or if that's just a lot, drop some hearts down below. Prefer preferably purple ones because that's my favorite color. All of the usual things. I hope you have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I need to get this thing to bed. I love you. Bye. I'll see you in the next one.